Hello, welcome to Elgin Museum. I'm Dave, a volunteer, and this is our internationally recognised fossil collection. As a result of quarrying in the Elgin area around 100 to 150 years ago, many fossils were coming to light. One particular example is this creature here, Elginia, a type of reptile, a periosaur, and this is the size that the animal would have been. In 1997, this particular block was found in Clashat Quarry, just outside of Elgin. It was noted it contained these very unusual features. It was decided to take this block to Glasgow Infirmary, where it underwent CT scanning. The information obtained resulted in this skull reconstruction. On the skull, we can see some tusks, a beak, eyes and a lower jaw. And this is the head it's thought to represent. The species in question was studied and named Gordonia. 250 million years ago, the Elgin area was a semi-arid environment with large areas of desert. On those desert dunes, animals walked and left footprint trails. These are the fossilised remains of those particular trails. On this block, we've got one trackway, two trackways, three trackways, representing the movement made by three animals moving from lower left to upper right on this particular dune face. These animals were thought to be stem mammals and small dicynodonts. On the trackway we've got some small mounds of sand and claw marks that you can see here. Now we've seen these fossils in Elgin Museum, we'll go to the coast where they can still be found. Welcome to Clashak Quarry. This is where a lot of the sandstone footprint slabs were found and where the Clashak skull was found in 1997. We have to remember, however, it is a working quarry. We've had permission to film inside this quarry, but over to my left, there is a publicly accessible am amphitheater where we can see some footprint slabs. Welcome to the publicly accessible footprint slab area just above Clashak Quarry. Here we have 25 sandstone slabs with some very nice examples of footprints. The reason this place has been put here is because of this particular slab here. This was in before 1997, was in the quarry floor, showing some nice large Dicynodon's footprints. The idea is that it's been put up at the same angle and orientation as it was in the quarry floor, so that information is still preserved for scientists to measure. Here we have a nice example of a footprint slab created by a medium-sized Dicynodont. We've got a very short stride length and quite a short body width as well. This animal seems to have been traversing up a dune slope. We can see how the pile of sand is below each footprint. So this animal was walking from lower left up to upper right with the pile of sand slipping beneath its feet as it was traversing up the dune. Now we've seen a few examples of these sandstone slabs in the public area. We'll go into the Clashak Quarry to see some more examples actually in the quarry floor itself. Let's go. Here we are inside the quarry and we can see some nice examples of fossil footprint slabs. There are some slabs over behind me and over to my right as well. Here we have the trackway of a medium sized Dicynodont with some very nicely preserved claw marks. We can also see a very small heap of sand showing that this animal was walking on a small inclined sand dune, walking from my left to my right. Clashak Quarry is known for displaying reptile trackways with tail drag, which is a fairly unusual phenomenon and certainly not seen in the Dumfriesia sandstones. This nice example shows a, a reptile moving through the sediments. His tail is bounced off the surface at times, but you can see his footprint coming through. So a relatively large stride length showing an animal which might have been six inches body length of around about six inches or thereabouts. Uh, but a nice example of a tail drag mark. This is a particularly interesting block in Clashak Quarry. Uh, unfortunately, the preservation is quite poor and we've got some eroded prints here, but they are interesting nevertheless. On my right here, we've got a tail drag of a reptile coming through with fairly circular prints and a relatively broad tail drag mark, as you can see, skipping through the sediments. 
On my left, a very different animal, still with a tail drag, but it's a much narrower tail drag. And the markings are three diagonal imprints of the feet, as you can see, going through the substrate. It's thought that this particular animal is a member of the Ichno species called Paleohelcura, which is a member of the scorpionid family. So we can't say it's a scorpion as such, but it's part of the scorpion family. And of course, modern day scorpions have got the tail upstanding, whereas this tail was dragging through the sediment. We've got two trails here, and what's very interesting is they seem to me, at least, <laughs> to be converging about here. So whether this animal was after this animal for its lunch, we'll never ever know. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit about the prehistoric life in the Elgin area. If you want to learn more, please visit us at Elgin Museum.